All right, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the tropics. There's some big updates to talk about there. We also have a stormy pattern upcoming and a potential Arctic blast that we still need to talk about. Let's just get straight into things, and we're taking a look here at our current radar imagery. First things first, we do have some showery activity here for the four corner states. That's light to moderate showery activity. Also for the Rockies in here, we're seeing some of that light to moderate activity. And we do have some moderate to heavy activity here for portions of the plains mostly South Dakota there, but also portions of Nebraska, uh, Iowa there, Minnesota, and potentially North Dakota a little bit later on. We can see for the Gulf states, we do have these tropical thunderstorms taking place, just like they've been taking place for probably like three or four months now. Uh, so those are still ongoing. Offshore of, this, of the East Coast, we do have some storminess as well. And then for kind of the Ohio Valley into the northeastern United States, we also have a storm system moving through. But it's bringing anywhere from light to moderate to even heavy precipitation for some of those portions as well. Now, let's just zoom into some different regions here. Taking a look at the Rockies, first things first. Again, this is mostly lighter, but we do have some more moderate pockets here, mostly northern Idaho and northern Montana, where we're seeing these pockets a little bit heavier than the surrounding regions. These are very isolated, though, and for the most part, uh, it's, it's very hit or miss. Now, for the four corner states, it's a tiny bit more widespread, but still scattered about for northern Arizona, southern Utah, uh, southern uh, Colorado, especially there, and then even portions of New Mexico as well, seeing some of the stormy conditions, again, light to moderate down there as well. This is where we have some of that heavier storminess ongoing uh, for portions of South Dakota here into Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, uh, even Minnesota, and potentially North Dakota a little bit later on. This definitely near Pierre and um, Aberdeen as well, about to get some of this activity, just to name a few spots. This is very heavy in certain regions, especially on the very southern end of that big uh, just area of storminess that we're seeing. Uh, now, a lot of this could lead towards some heavy rainfall and even potentially flooding as we see this persistent heavy rainfall, so we're going to be on the lookout for that. Mostly looks like scattered and isolated thunderstorms up and down this portion, though. Now, Let's take a look here at the Gulf of Mexico. We'll take a look at kind of the Western Gulf first things first. We do have a lot of thunderstorm activity throughout portions of coastal Texas and coastal Louisiana, even making its way pretty far inland to Louisiana and Mississippi there. Um, and these are sudden downpours. These thunderstorms are very, very intense. They're very tropical and they have a lot of precipitable water in them, humidity, moisture, uh, coming off the Gulf, and this could lead towards some serious flooding type situations. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. This is also a lot more widespread than it typically is, so that's also worth noting. Usually we see very isolated activity. This happens to be a lot more widespread. Now off the west coast of Florida, we can see quite a bit of thunderstorms, and off the east coast of Florida, we see the same thing. Now mainland Florida, you're kind of uh, in the clear right now, but as we all know, this could come to an end a little bit later on today, especially with thunderstorms on the western and eastern end of things. Now, as we work our way up the coast, we can see for very coastal regions here of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, we do have some very isolated and scattered showers taking place, a little bit heavier offshore, and for the Outer Banks, uh, which tends to get these kinds of offshore-type storms uh, actually bringing impacts for you guys. It's kind of like an island, obviously. We see for Tennessee and uh, some other surrounding regions, we do see some thunderstorm activity. Uh, we, we see, in general, uh, this is a little bit heavier uh, in nature, so we're going to be on the lookout for that as well. We also see that for the northeast, Ohio Valley, and Great Lakes, we have a bit of a larger storm system, bringing mostly isolated activity for areas further south and west. But as you work your way towards New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, we see a little bit more persistent storminess taking place, mostly showers, but maybe some thunderstorms, especially there in New York. Uh, definitely worth noting there in these drought-stricken regions that definitely need some of this rainfall. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the upcoming storminess, the upcoming below normal temperatures that are going to come with that Arctic air mass that is going to set in. And we're also going to take a look at the tropics where there is a pretty decent update that we need to talk about. All right, now we're taking a look here at the upcoming storminess. I just want to move us towards later on today on Friday, August 26th. And as you can see, there's plenty of storminess going on here in the eastern United States as a whole. This will be mostly in the form of thunderstorms, but possibly some showers for some spots as well. We also see across the Rockies and down through the four corner states, we see some activity ongoing as well. As we approach a little bit later this weekend, like Sunday, August 28th, we have some precipitation for some spots here, horseshoeing around the Ohio Valley, mostly for the plains in the upper Midwest there, but also down through the southeast and up the east coast as well. 
for some spots. As we approach about Tuesday, August 30th, we see a big low pressure center here over Canada, and this is extending a cold front down through the eastern United States, bringing storminess through a lot of the southeast first off, down through the south central United States, and up the Ohio Valley into portions of the northeast as well. This is impacting multiple different regions here uh, with a lot of this storminess. Very, very quiet out east, I mean out west as you can see, pretty much nothing going on at this point. And then we get really quiet in the United States for a little bit there uh, through the beginning of September. Friday, September 2nd, we have some activity here through the Gulf states, but not a whole lot ongoing. Uh, it's as we approach the very end of this model run around the 4th through the 5th, which will be Sunday through Monday, again, 4th and 5th of September here. Uh, we see, first off, a tropical system of some sort here over Cuba. So this is one thing we're going to be watching, uh, potentially to head into the Gulf or up the east. Uh, eastern United States, only time we'll be able to tell really. We do have a lot of precipitation already in place here for the southeast and the south central United States. This is going to be super interesting. It's obviously 10 days out, so we'll watch it closely. Uh, but this is a bit far out to really make any clear predictions of what would happen with this type of a scenario or if this scenario would even take place at all. Now, for total precipitation through the next 10 days, we expect practically no precipitation there in the whites. Your grays would be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches. Your reds would be two to five inches. And then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. We do see that we already have some cooler temperatures in place here for the eastern United States. Uh, it's as we approach approximately Tuesday, August 30th here. We see some warm temperatures out west, some warmth for the northeast, but this is that Arctic blast here. Uh, and what we're going to see is it's going to shoot down into the eastern United States. It's truly going to blast into the United States. Here's by Wednesday, August 31st, and we can see the jet stream is doing something like this. So we see some warm air able to make its way up the east coast, but this cold air is rushing in quickly. They're creating a trough, and we have a strong positive PNA out west. This is the pattern. Uh, and as we approach approximately Thursday into Friday, that's going to be the 1st and 2nd of September. We've been watching this date for about a week or more now. So this has been a clear date to watch for this Arctic blast to take place. And trust me, you would feel these temperatures here in the greens. Uh, these reds out west is truly working its way far north into Canada. Um, you'd feel very, very far above normal for these regions. This cold just kind of sits around for a little while here, all the way till the 4th of um, September here. And even on a couple of other frames, it seems more intense. We have a pretty strong low that tries to develop in here, and that creates some interesting temperature patterns in there. But for the most part, that is the time frame we're watching. The 31st of August through about the 5th of September is when we're watching for a strong signal at an Arctic blast. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Here we are taking a look at it. It doesn't look too much different than yesterday. One thing you will note is we do have a 20% chance of this disturbance number two developing over the next five days, but it does look to be heading towards Central America there, potentially hitting the Yucatan Peninsula. Well, what it will do after that point, only time would be able to tell. We do have this one in the middle of the Atlantic where we have our biggest update. There's still a 10% chance over the next 48 hours, but now there's a 30% chance over the next five days. So we've upgraded from a 20% to a 30% chance. You got to start somewhere and it is moving up currently. So we'll see what this one does over time. As of now, we have two low chance areas of tropical development. Very interesting how quiet this hurricane season has been. And if we close out the month of August without a tropical storm, it would be, I think, one of three over the past 60 years where we haven't had a single tropical storm form in the month of August. Very interesting stuff, and I'm honestly cheering for that. I think record-breaking is pretty cool, especially when it's in that direction, not the more extreme direction. But when we break a record uh, for how quiet and peaceful the weather has been, I think everybody's kind of happy about that one. So I think it's a record we can all cheer for and hope for that we break the record. Uh, basically, top one of the only three uh, months of August in the past 60 years to have no tropical storms form. You'd love to be in that statistic, obviously. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll continue to track these tropics, the Arctic blast, and the storminess over the coming days and throughout the year and next year, hopefully. So uh, this is going to be something we're doing daily, like always. So be sure to subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content. Also, like the video if you did and leave a comment down below. 
I'll see you guys in the next one.